hit the media day. Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to the Government Affairs meeting for the month of May. It's good to see you all here. Um, we are lucky to have Lisa Tobin, the city sanitarian, who I can attest is one of the hardest working people in City Hall. Um, one of definitely one of my go to people, and I think I speak for all the councilors when I say that. Um, so, Lisa, you're going to talk about the new FDA Ooh, yeah. voluntary retail standards. Yes. That is? Well done. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, welcome, Lisa. Thank you. Um, thanks for having me, guys. So, yes, last year, um, I, along with the public health director, decided to apply for the FDA National Voluntary Retail Standards Program. Um, so we applied, we got some grant money. So we are now working with the food inspectors to implement these nine standards in the city of Lynn. And it's going to standardize our food program. It's going to have us reaching voluntary goals to improve our food safety program. So one of the first things that we are working on, which was recently an article in the paper, which I think might have caught everybody's attention, was we're changing everybody's risk type on their food licenses. So we're gonna start following the FDA's standards on the definition of a type one low risk food permit, a type two low to mid risk, type three mid to high and type four high risk. So your type ones will be the convenience store that everything is prepackaged, everything comes in from somebody else, they're just keeping it cold, they're selling it to you. Um, and your type four would be a restaurant that has like sushi. Sushi is a special process in the food in the food code, and it requires variances from the Board of Health, and it requires you, it allows you to do things outside of the food code as long as all of it's documented and you have trained personnel. So we're we're moving to do that. And by meeting these standards, like I said, I believe that we will improve the food safety program in the city of Lynn. We will make things more transparent for the restaurant owner. They will know what to expect us coming in because we're gonna be like, here, here, we found a violation. These are the next steps. This is what's gonna happen if it's not corrected. Here's how you should be correcting it. They're going to know exactly what to expect. There's not gonna be a question of, well, you know, how come they didn't have this or how come this person didn't have it? Everything is gonna be a written procedure. So whether it's me here in this position or somebody else, the city will have a document identifying how everything for the food safety program should run. Whether it's this food inspector or that food inspector, the document stands here. We're going to be able to, we have grant money to be able to translate everything into different languages and along with the help that we have at City Hall um, in language access, everything will be translated into whatever language our, res our restaurants and stores need. Um, and I just think that overall, it will improve what we've already worked on here in the city of Lynn, which is the grading program, you know, which not all cities and towns do. That's that's uh, something we decided to do here in Lynn. Um, and it will help bring us to a accredited health department. So by getting the food standards, getting everything standardized and meeting those, those goals with the FDA, that's one part of the whole public health department becoming an accredited public health department. We're we're working on that. It's gonna take a couple of years. That that's to be expected. It's it's actually a five-year goal to get to all nine standards, and then you just keep recertifying. Um, the great thing about it is it's it's living documents, so they can change as things change, as we see processes change in the city, as new things come up in the city. You know, I'm always trying to make sure that we're allowing our restaurants and stores to do the most they can do. Um, I know a lot of restaurants, we were just talking about this last week, if, if they're having a hard time paying the rent, you know, um, so we're allowing restaurants to share kitchen space. You know, I don't really need to be in there till three o'clock. Somebody needs to be in there at 6 a.m. Okay, let's make this work. Um, so I'm always trying to look to see what we can do to help the businesses stay and succeed in Lynn. And what can we do to make sure that, you know, every customer knows when they're walking into a restaurant or even a store where you're picking up a pasta meat or a slice of pizza that you feel good about, you know, the food's going to be safe and, and you're going to be good. So, anybody have any questions? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, can you talk to me a little bit about the grading program that you mentioned? Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're obviously, from my understanding, a, a food serving business, and this is prepared foods. That are served ready to eat. 
The grading program is for anybody who is a risk four or a risk three. Okay, yes. got it. Yeah. So we have the, the four risk categories. And then if you're in a risk three or four, then you get a grade. grade. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to me a little bit about those grades? Sure. So the grading program was actually established um, prior to myself coming to the city of Lynn um, through the Board of Health. It's a program that you're starting to see across the country. There are other communities in Massachusetts doing it, but we are one of the first in the amount of time that we've been doing it. And essentially, when the food inspector goes in to do an inspection, we have a standardized inspection form, out of our standards program, <laughs> um, which we've actually been using. So we were already ahead of the game on that. Um, we have a standardized inspection form. Everything on the inspection is worth points. And the grading program is, this is the highest amount of points you can get is 450. And for every violation that you have, depending on the violation, we subtract points. And A is between 450 and, forgive me, I don't exactly know off the top of my head, you know, between 450 and this, a B is from here to here, and it goes right down. And, you know, and a C would be, you could be open with a C, but you might be closed with a C too, depending on what the actual violations are. Um, grades are given at routine inspections. So you don't get a grade every time the inspector shows up. It's kind of like a pop quiz. We come in as a surprise to do the routine food inspection. That's when you get your grade. The standards program will identify how many routine inspections you get per year. So if you're a risk four, you're going to get four inspections. If you're a risk three, you're going to get three inspections. Risk two, you're going to get two. Risk one, you're going to get one. Right? We're trying to put our resources to the um, licenses that have the highest risk, the people who are doing things with the variants, the people who are preparing food across the cross-contamination line. You know, I've got raw chicken and it goes from the refrigerator to the sink, to the prep counter, to the stove, to a plate, to the customer, right? That whole line, anywhere in there could be any kind of cross-contamination so we consider that a higher risk. The more high risk that you're doing, the more we're gonna be there to assess. Um, Grades, we do allow for one rescore. So it's like that free pop quiz that your teacher used to give you at the end of the year to get your get your points up for your grade. Once a year, you can request a rescore. We all know it. The inspection is just one moment in time, you know, and very often it's the day the inspector goes there and the, you know, little Johnny was sick and couldn't, you know, so mom who works there full time couldn't get to work all day. The people there don't know what's going on. The, tr the delivery truck broke down. There's no food. The refrigerator's on the fritz or something. It's just one of those days, um, you know, and we understand that that's the day we came to give you a grade and maybe there's violations that are existing that don't generally exist on that day. We do give you the opportunity to come in, apply for a rescore, um, and we'll go back out there within 30 days to see if things have changed and we'll change your grade. Um, that's only once per year, though. So. <laughs> yeah, so if it's happening four times a yeah. year. Yeah, if it's happening yeah. four times a year, that's probably not something happens out of the ordinary. Yeah. Um, the, uh, where is this grade posted? Uh, do, do people, are they, is it a required posting or yeah. anything like that? Yeah, it's required. So the food grading program is itself is a document, and that is a Board of Health regulation. Um, so it's enforceable through Board of Health, and grades are supposed to be um, posted someplace where someone walking by or driving by could see. Okay. You shouldn't have to walk into a restaurant to see the grade. The point is to give the customer an opportunity to make a decision based on that grade without actually walking in and saying, oh, I'll have, um, you know, this. Oh, you yeah, have a C. Never mind. And walking out, yeah. right? So, <laughs> you know, um, you know. Specifically, it should be in the top half of the windows. We try to give people some leniency, just have it posted. We've had the grades long enough that I think people know to look for them. You'll see that they're dated when they were most recently inspected. They're signed by our food inspectors. Um, you know, I mean, I have people call me saying, I lost my grade. Can you can you print me a new one? Because I think the grades matter. I think people feel proud of themselves and they get an A and they should. You know, it's not easy. We were just talking about post-COVID to, to keep things going in the restaurants right now. So, you know, when people are doing well and, and have a good grade, you know, that's what they're proud to show when you put out on the door. Um, something that I've, I've talked with some restaurants um, <laughs> for, um, they're interested in uh, really complying and getting that A. Yep. Um, is there any service support? 
report where they can get, but I'll use the word a pre-inspection um, to have someone come in on an ungraded level to really walk through and say, hey, this is what we see. Um, these would be things that we'd want you to really get up to par to get that A. So that is a great question because I did forget to mention that through the standards program, we will be required on our end to provide more resources to the restaurant community. So we will be sponsoring person in charge training. Um, some, sometimes it will be voluntary. Sometimes as we're talking about these regulations, sometimes it will be required. If we're consistently going somewhere and it does not appear that the person in charge actually knows what they need to know, we'll require them to come to that training. We will sponsor the training. So yes, we will definitely have more resources available to help people proactively before a routine inspection takes place through the standards program. Right now, what we do is whenever it's a new owner, we do a pre-operational inspection and there's no grade on that. You know, so you, you, you're a new owner, you've just come in, we want to see what's going on. We come in, we do the inspection. We don't grade you on that. We'll actually come back 30 days after you're open to grade you. So that's really the time that folks can find out like, oh, what's going on. We do have some checklists that we can give to folks. Um, there is a requirement in most instances for there to be someone certified food protection manager training on site, I, you know, I, I took the test the first time and passed it. It does not mean I knew anything about what I actually had to do. It just meant that I could pass the test. Um, so I understand that, that, you know, that happens. People are eager to get going. They take the test, they pass it, and then they're in the, the restaurant or the store, and they're like, I don't actually know how to apply what I learned in the book. Um, we're working on that. You know, I definitely recognize that as something that would be helpful. We are working on that. We do inspections through the Inspectional Services Department based on applications and regulations. So there's not always an opportunity to do these kind of proactive inspections prior to what we're required to do. So like when you apply with a food permit, right off the bat, you paid for your food permit, you paid for your inspection. You apply for a rescore, you paid for your inspection. Um, and it would be a there are times where it could possibly be a conflict of interest if we went in there and said, okay, this is what you need to do. And then we came back and this group just said, well, you're doing that wrong. Well, you told me to do it this way. So we, we have to make sure that we, we watch that fine line. Um, I've definitely recommended people to you and some of the other um, business associations in the city because they also have provided help always happy to come and do trainings on anything that a particular group thinks you know we're, we seem to be missing this a lot of people are calling and saying i keep getting cited for hot holding violations like what am i doing wrong like we're more than happy to come out and speak generally about that to a group of people to help them um, but the standards program i think will help that more than we're doing now are the inspectors city employees or is it an outside company Excuse me, my allergies are messed everybody. Uh, oh my gosh. Gosh. <laughs> um, they are contract employees. So they are not city of an employees. Wait, I'm a city of an employee. Um, they are we contract with a company. They do Lynn and they do a number of other communities, but they will I don't have my ID on right now, but they will always have an a city of Lynn ID on them to identify themselves as being with the city of Lynn. How many establishments? How many establishments are there? Go. In total, <laughs> we have just under 500 establishments in City of Lynn. Wow. It's a lot. It's a lot. Like yeah. it's it's always yeah. it's what I've always said. <laughs> so we're talking again from your convenience, convenience store right. to restaurant. Restaurant. Um, it's funny. It's just always what I've been used to because it's always been that way since I've been here. And um, I talk to other communities and they're like, "What?" And I'm like, oh, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> they have 25, right? We have yeah. 25. <laughs> Seven. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Right. And do the inspections also include alcohol? No, no. So if you're a liquor serving establishment, you do have to get an inspection once a year. And that is through building and fire. Those are life safety inspections. Are your egresses available? Are your emergency lights on? Do you have a trial control manager certificate? Do you have TIP certified folks? Mm -hmm. They're doing life safety. Like, can you get out of this building if you 
had a little too much to drink. Yeah. So nobody checks like cleanliness or tap lines. Or... Um, that's what the food inspectors will check. Okay. We'll check that during our food inspections for sure. Yep. yep. Check the tap line. Sometimes, yeah, yeah we check the ice machines and if, yeah. And yeah, if we're, definitely ice machines. Yeah, <laughs> and, and we have, I mean, we've been places where you could kind of just see that the tap lines were not in good shape. I, it hasn't come up recently that I've seen, mm -hmm. but it would have to be pretty bad if for it to be that noticeable. And we, and we know it's some, or if the tap lines are coming in. So like somebody was, somebody had one that was emptying into a three base sink and we were like, oh, we gotta fix that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. I think you mentioned it already, but I just wanted to make it clear to me. So you come to my restaurant, I get a B or a store, I get a B rating, and I really want to fix it quick because I want to get, I had an A, but now I got, can, can you get the A pretty quick if I make the adjustments? Or do I, is it like another year? You will? No. So you need to um, apply for that rescore inspection within seven days okay. of that initial routine that gave you the B. So you have seven mm -hmm. days to come to me. Give me a rescore application, and we will be out there within about 30 days. See if I've made the to inspect or to train to inspect, and then and what if they need training in between? Like, what if they come in and they say, I've you know, I've got some problems, but I need some help and, and rectify yeah, it? Yeah, unfortunately, we don't provide that training. You know, we give them what they need to correct the violations. Um, again, for our inspectors to train them how to fix it and then go out there and test them on it is a little. You know, so we generally would recommend that they hire somebody or, or seek out assistance from one of the um, business associations for that. But, you know, we're cognizant of the fact that things happen. And, you know, if someone's applying, we, we try our best to get out there as quickly as possible. Because I know I look. Yeah. I look yeah. at the when I go in places. I'm proud of how um, the city and the food establishments are in the city, to be honest with you. Like, there's been huge improvements since I came here eight and a half years ago. And... I feel like, I say this all the time, I know maybe it sounds silly, but I feel like we really could be a food mecca on the North Shore. We have the auditorium. We have so many places that you can walk to to eat mm -hmm. just within the auditorium from a food truck on State Street to, you know, white tablecloth dining at some of our other restaurants to like burgers and tacos and, mm -hmm. or just that you just want to sit down in a little shop and just have a glass of wine with maybe like a little appetizer before a show. Or, you know, then you just drive around the city and you can, you know, you can be in these business squares or on the lake or, you know, right. anywhere. And just, so just, some of our restaurants have great outdoor dining with yeah. music and there's so much food and so many places to go and Lynn that I really feel like this is a great program here and we do a good job. And, and because we have so many places, like we said, almost 500, and we're so diverse in what we do and, and what we can eat here, that it's a big program. That's um, authentic. Yeah. So yeah. you do, right, do right you here. inspect the food trucks? I was just going to say that. Yeah. yeah. You thought I was. Yeah, we yeah. inspect the food trucks. Yeah. Is that part of the 500? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we inspect the food trucks the same. They're high risk, this, the same as right. we did. Right. There was a brick and mortar store, and we inspect their commissary. Yep. So they're getting two inspections because, oh. you know, they're making food on the truck, but they're actually every day going back somewhere and, you know, storing the peppers and the cheese and whatever it may yeah. be that they need. And then the morning that they go back to the commissary, they're prepping everything. They're cutting and chopping and getting everything ready to put on the truck. And then they're going out to the truck that day. They're so. good. I tried the one with the car wash. That, they're oh, my gosh. The, 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 the Tex-Mex one? On the car, yeah. But that makes me feel good. That yeah. you're yeah. checking you that yet, where they're coming oh, from. Yeah. No, and okay. then the truck yeah. itself. Oh, absolutely. Oh, I am? Okay. Yeah. Oh, no. I feel we are very, we're very right. spoiled when it comes yeah, to the first thing. Because we have everything. Not that I'll never do too much. Yeah, yeah. Favorite thing at all these different restaurants. I'm like, well, if I want this, I'm going to go here. And if I want that, I'm going to go here. And right. there's not a lot of communities that you can do that because right. you're just like, well, this is what we have. Or um, it, another funny story one time when I was living way down, way down off Lakefield <laughs> Street, like way down off. <laughs> it was the only time that I lived in Lynn that I could not walk to something to eat. And I was like, oh. Yeah. Wow. Right. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how I feel about this actually. So, so yeah, we do a lot of inspections, you know, like we're out there making sure that everything's good. Even, even the temporary events that we have, <clears throat> we just had the Khmer New Year Festival in the Commons. They're coming to me. They're giving me their paperwork. They're signing off on things. I'm checking to see what they're doing, how they're doing it. 
um, if anybody had a chance to go there, you'll see they have hand wash things out there. They've got, you know, they've got training up where they're out there. So it's awesome. yeah, it is, you know, who doesn't want to stop at a food truck? You know what I mean? They're not the way they used to be back in the 80s, right? you know? <laughs> I mean, we even, believe it or not, we even have canteen trucks. And mm -hmm. the difference between the food truck and the canteen mm -hmm. truck, the food truck is making the food on the truck. The canteen truck made it somewhere else and they're keeping it hot or cold on the truck. So you're not actually waiting for your food to be made. You're just kind of getting them going. But yeah, we do all those inspections. Even the ice cream trucks, we do the inspections. I was just going to ask you that. <laughs> that. And you know, it's pretty cool. You mentioned all these restaurants, the diverse diversity we have in our food here in Lynn. And you go to all these restaurants and you're, it's not just all Lynn people. No. People are coming to other from other communities to come to Lynn yeah. to eat because... The great stuff we have yeah. yeah yeah i really try to um work hard at two things personally having high standards for the food safety program mm -hmm. and making sure that i get the same level of availability help and whatever i can do to the businesses you know during covid it was tough for the restaurants mm -hmm. without a doubt yeah. um you know fortunately i have been collecting emails and I have, I think you guys know, and I have a big email blast that I send to people. And I was able to be like, okay, this regulation has changed. This is what we're doing now. And just to let people know that, like, we're thinking, I'm thinking of you. I want to make sure, you know, like, if you have any questions, call and let me know. And, you know, even if it's a Saturday, if you drop me an email, I'm probably checking my emails at some point. I'll get back to you. I recognize that, you know, restaurants are, they, they're, they're far more than the 33.5 hours I work at City Hall. Um, and if I can be there for somebody, you know, even if it's just by email to answer a question for them and it makes them feel supported and it makes them feel like, well, this is why we work so hard to get that A and this is why it matters. Like at least somebody's there. So that that's kind of what I've done. I, I try to, I ask for what I try to get from people, so. Yeah. Uh, the one thing that I would love to um, continue to build on because I think you do a good job with it and, and wherever we can step in and support um, is to, expand the resources for those high beats um if, if someone's in a, in a low c category they, they need to have some self-reflection um but when people are in that high b category and they're just how do i get to that next step um whatever that guidance consulting i I, I think some of the standardized forms are going to help with that. I, I loved when we talked about that. Um, but if we can, again, work with the businesses, brainstorm, collaborate together to try to find how to get those kind of those high Bs into that A category. Because um, sometimes it's just those little things. So um, I will, um, one thing with the food grading program that we do do, is if you continue to get the same question or item wrong, you get more points taken off each time. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of those high Bs are probably someone who has had a repeat violation and it's taking an extra point or two off, right? Like, like let's be honest, I've had people call me, oh, my favorite place is a B. <laughs> it might just be one point from an A. Right, it might just be one point from an A, so it doesn't necessarily mean like they're just so much worse than the A place. Um, but that being said, one of the things that we're working on through the standards program with these with this grant money that we're getting is identifying which violations occur the most in the city. Yeah. And right now, we already know it's hot holding and cold holding. A lot of it comes down to your steam table is really old. It doesn't maintain the proper temperature. You've got to replace the steam table. And then when we come in and we check it, it's going to be fine. A lot of times I find that it's an investment in resources more so than what the staff needs to know. But we are going to identify the highest violation for the thing that we're finding across the board at all the different restaurants. And those are the ones that we're going to focus on some of our training. I mean, that would be amazing. Um, it might also be a, a great opportunity to look in some, uh, to collaborate with some of the grant programs that are out there and available. If, if we're running this one business, their hot holding table is just 
uh, 45 years old, and it's just exactly. consistently at 127 degrees. So you just can't get it up to right. 135. <laughs> um, that maybe that is an, an opportunity to collaborate with some of those other grant opportunities. To but yeah, the, well, the mayor and the council right, they did the small business program, right? Through Jim Cardell. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, I know people want these. Right, right. 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 Have, actually, I'm going to put in a plug. We right now have grants available oh, okay. for through, uh, COVID grant funding and one more free one EDIC, one more place of money. No. Um, mm -hmm. That I think when these types of opportunities come up, yeah. we can seek to target some of these, yeah. hey, yeah. you five people, you've gotten this B due to this piece of equipment. Here's yeah. the grant opportunity to That's replace. Great. So I think there might be some of that connecting the yeah. dots opportunities yeah. where we Absolutely. can look to support the businesses to get them from that B to the A. What are some examples of what separates a, a B from an A? It's points. It, honestly, it's, it's points. So there's three types of violations on a food inspection report. It's a priority, a priority foundation, or a core. Priority, have to take the most points off. The next set of points is priority um, foundation, and the next set of points is a core. So depending on what the violation was, if it was a priority violation, such as you don't have hot water at the hand sink, so you wash your hands. <laughs> That's going to be more points than. Um, your hand sink was blocked. You had stuff in the hand sink, which makes it inaccessible to wash your hands. Um, you, your refrigeration is off and none of your food has the right refrigeration versus um, your, I don't even want to say sandwich unit because that's still refrigeration. Um, Versus your bleach bucket didn't have the right reason. So. Yeah, you're, exactly. <laughs> you know, or the refrigeration that wasn't working, everything in the refrigerator in the refrigerator was stacked incorrectly. You know, so like there's a protocol for how to stack food. So you always put fruits and vegetables up top. You never put raw chicken on top in case mm -hmm. it drips yeah, down onto yeah. the fresh vegetables and everything. You know, so we see a lot of those kind of things, but the, those are the difference. The the FDA and the state. Um, have identified like which things are considered priority, which things are priority foundation, and which are core. And it it will say that on people's inspection reports. Um, I guess this is a good opportunity for me to tell folks one of the other things that I want to work on through this grant through the standard is translating the inspection reports, which are really super useful if you can read them. Yep. Right, if you understand them and and not just understand them in the language that you're most comfortable understanding them in, understanding the food talk, right? The lay language that we use, the technical language that we use in the food world. Um, it, but everybody's inspection report will show you what was in violation, and then on the back, it will explain you know, went to the steam table and everything was only at 100 degrees you know, ensure that steam table is, is meeting proper degrees. So everything is spelled out on the inspection report to identify, you know, what was wrong and what type of violation it was. Just, just a weird question. So if I want to open up a restaurant tomorrow, right? Mm -hmm. Would someone give me a list of what needs to be done? Like a whole packet of A, B, C, D, E to get on get on board to get on. In if you wanted to open a restaurant. Yeah, say, oh, sorry, for a second, I was thinking you said if you went into a restaurant. No, if I want, I'm sorry, if I want yeah. to open a new restaurant, like there has to be something where everyone would know what to do right out of the gate, right? Uh, yeah. So is that the state or is that the city? Or well, not? there's the food code, which is the state okay. code and the federal food yeah, code, yeah. which, you know, certainly accessible online to people. You know, I can send that out to folks. Um, we can give copies of the food grading program. Generally, what I say is if you're buying a space and it's turnkey, you're going into a space and you basically want to paint a new sign and open up. Here, let me give you copies of the most recent inspections we did there. Okay. And this will help identify if there's any equipment issues. Maybe, you know what I mean? Like, hey, you know, they keep band-aiding this refrigerator. You know, look, look at how many times and they, you know, they fixed it by fixing the gasket. Oh, they fixed it. They called in the refrigerator guy. Oh, they put a new plug on it. Like this refrigerator probably does not have a lot of life left in it. So we've definitely recommended people come reach out to us for previous inspections to see physically what was an issue. Um, and we do have a pre-inspection checklist. And I always recommend that people 
get your training first, get your certified food protection manager training first. And that's where they would learn about putting the veggies on mm. the chicken on yeah. the bottom. Okay. Yeah. And if you wanted to open a business, I know the mayor's office and EDIC has put together okay. an awesome booklet. How to get, of your, permit how to get your permit, where to go. Like, yeah. I think years and years ago, uh, the you know, people would say, I don't even know where to start, but the, the two offices put this Streamline book out. together and it's, yeah. it's really good and you can get one at City Hall. Yeah, because there is a lot of licensing and permitting mm -hmm. involved in owning a business and um, I've tried to become super knowledgeable about that because let's face it, my license is probably next to the liquor license, the most important license that you have. Right. But then there's also the sign license, the TV license, mm -hmm. the this license. And, you know, they're like, Lisa, and I'm like, hold on, I'll get you to the right person. We'll get you yeah. set up to where you need to go. Um, because it can be very confusing and mm -hmm. going to all these different offices for everything that you need to do. Um, so it's fair to say when I bought them many years ago, if someone put the floor mats on the bar and the dishwasher to clean them, that's probably not allowable. <gasps> <laughs> no, yeah, I saw a kid fold the floor and put him in there to put it back. As long as you had to rub the dishwasher once, I can relate to that. I just can't. I'm like, I don't think that's legal. Yeah. 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 And it's just in the raw chicken that you're that's that we just that you put in the dishwasher. Yeah. Mm. That's how we used to do it. You just had to run an empty slot and throw it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's just being washed. I'm excited. <laughs> I wasn't in the way, no, just for the record. <laughs> Lisa, I shamefully admit, since the COVID, and I live in Lynn, I shamefully admit that I, I kind of stopped going to restaurants that I knew and have used over a long period of time since I was born in the city and my family, grandparents live in the city. Uh, and, and the reason for that, I am yesterday, I went out to eat, my husband and I went out to eat, and we drove through heavy traffic, or some, somewhat heavy traffic, into Winthrop to go to Del Isle because we know that they have fresh fish delivered every day, and the price is superb. It's like $18.99 for a baked haddock with rice and coleslaw, and the views are spectacular. I mean, I must have sat for half an hour after eating <laughs> just to watch the planes landing yeah. and the boats going into Boston and the Boston skyline. And that combination of price, quality, and scenery, I find to be difficult to to be. I mean, I used to go to Rolly's uh, breakfast. I used to go down to the Foothold Pub, um, which is not there. Uh, places that I used to go to are simply not there. And I can I can almost name the restaurants that I choose. I have not been able to find, at least because I don't like spicy food. I'm not a fried food eater. I, I'm not a heavy liquor drinker. I'm not a drink liquor drinker at all. I mean, so I tend to choose places that, that satisfy my needs. But we like to go out. I certainly like to sponsor and be part of Lynn Business. That's I consider that to be critical, mm -hmm. critically important for all of us who live in Lynn. And yet I'm having difficulty meeting and, and again it's since the COVID. I, I drove the Port Hope's no longer there. Rolly's uh, breakfast place is no longer there. I mean places that I used in the past I, I'm not so easily using. And I, again, I can find, as long as I go distances, I, there's a, another place called um, the, the Blue Marlin. Again, the price is superb. They get fish delivered every morning. I've never had a bad meal. And, and again, you can get in as long as you go off times. I, I have not been able to find that here. So you're here, you're inspecting, you know the city. I can't go around trying out restaurants. <laughs> um, and I know you can't really sponsor a particular restaurant. I, I understand that being that's one of the problems. Um, you know, gospel television, you cannot choose one uh, business over another business. But the fact is that you know more than the rest of us. That's your business. You know what's good, what's not good out there. You have there. to follow Lisa. Wherever Lisa yeah. goes, you yeah. know it's good. <laughs> I think, I, like you said, you have particular yeah. foods and you choose, You maybe you want a pizza for tonight. You know exactly where you like to go. And, well, and that honestly, that's not based on how well I think the place does. That's really just based on my your taste. Well, my taste, yeah. what, you know, 
Do you know how many different types of pizza you can get in Lynn? Do you want thin crust pizza? Do you want Greek pizza? Do you want puffy doughy pizza? Do you want really fancy pizza? Do you just want like that old fashioned pizza like when you were a kid that your mom brought home? Like there's even just pizza. It, how many different kinds of pizza do you want to have? I mean, you probably don't eat pizza. Though. I love pizza. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I love pizza. But what I will what I will say is this. I know for a fact that there are so many restaurant owners who are up at four and five in the morning. They're going to Restaurant Depot to pick up fresh food for the day and bring it in. They're, you know, matter of fact, um, it's it's not a secret, but it's something that I'm working on. So I'm not going to give too much away yet. But mm, we have someone, a wholesaler who's come back to Lynn, um, who's got a lot of food experience, who's got a lot of connections and a lot of years in the food business. We're actually trying to come up with almost like a buyer's co-op so mm. that folks can try to purchase food in bulk at lower costs. So, you know, a number of restaurants or stores will participate. They'll identify like the most used items. And instead of, you know, having to go and pay $5.99 per whatever, they can pay $3.99 per whatever by buying it through bulk food this program. So we're trying to help people be able to get their food from reputable sources, get their food on a more fresh and get it at less cost. But there are so many restaurants that they're out there every day picking up the fresh produce. They're going into the to the um to pop to like the North End of Boston and the Chelsea markets to get fish and stuff like that. It's you know it, it may not look the way it looks when you, you said you went to Belle Island, like, you know, that's a destination, right? Like, that's that's no different. Well, it's than, just like an old warehouse. Right. It's nothing fancy. Right, but it's a destination because of what you can see. I think, um, you know, I think Lynn is a diverse community. It's ever-changing. You know, I mean, there's a reason the Continental and the Century House are still in business, right? Like, but mm -hmm. there's also a reason why you don't see restaurants like that really being built anymore. Mm -hmm. Those restaurants still exist because they've been there forever. The quality of their food has been great forever, and generations of people have gone there. Right. Um, those are hard businesses to maintain if you don't own the property, if you if you're not already into that long enough. You know, when you're in Lynn. And you're trying to open up a new business, you know, there's all these permitting costs, there's all these costs for new equipment, mm -hmm. and there's just right now the high cost of food. Um, I think, you know, what you're describing are restaurants that still exist, but not as much as they used to in Lynn. Mm -hmm. But there's, there's still a lot of places um, that, you know, you know, maybe you can't sit outside and watch the planes in the water, but you can go inside and meet great people. I mean, there's a there's a restaurant down in Westland, down very close to GE, and the chefs go to white jacket on every time you see him. What's the name of the restaurant? He's very <laughs> there a white jacket every time you see him with his name embroidered. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and we would probably most of us all kind of drive by, not think much of it, maybe because of the name of the restaurant, or because of where it is. And I'll tell you what, the best mashed potatoes I've ever had in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like, I, I don't even order mashed potatoes. I was there for something. And you know, he was like, Lisa, please try my food. I'm like, of course I'll try your food. And I was like, oh, these are literally the best mashed potatoes <laughs> I've ever had in my entire life. Like, I would come here, and, and you have the one that I like. I would come here and order potatoes and wine. Like, <laughs> and, and mostly because most of the menu is not food that I generally eat because I'm not a big fried food eater myself. But I was like, you know, like, Super nice people, great service, you know, white right. coat shop in the place. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, who's to say you can't go to some place new, you know, maybe just have an appetizer or just mm -hmm. a couple of drinks. And then if there's, you know, if you love your favorite steak from somewhere in the city, you go there and have your favorite steak. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think being open to just trying a new place and at least maybe just going in and sitting down and saying, oh, you know a little appetizer or something, we'll have a drink and chew here or a soda or whatever it might be. Let's just see what it's like in here. Just to get a sense of what's really happening in the city, I think would be so helpful to so many of the restaurants because they, they're out there, they're busting their butts and they're doing a great job. I think during COVID, we were a little bit the opposite of you and I know you were too, Rick. Like we were trying to do takeout from all these right. small yeah. places, trying to keep Agreed. them alive. I mean, posting we were, it online. yeah, right. posting what we had, Agreed. where we got it. Like, and then 
since COVID, I mean, we try to go out to eat, not a lot, but we're trying to support all these businesses in Lynn and keeping them going. And yeah. we, you can go someplace different every night for yeah a month or two. Right. Easy, yeah. easy, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We do the same thing with you know getting food. Like, we like to cook, um, but again, knowing that the businesses were hurting and you know, like you know like let's try to get some takeout from somewhere that maybe we haven't tried before. Um, and I found some great Thai food, believe it or not. And I was like, oh, this is great. I, I made a huge Chinese really to find great Thai food. <laughs> and I think it was super, Inland. <laughs> super creative on how they did the pickups. Yep. You know, some of them created uh, windows that were never open before right. and yeah. doorways yeah. that were, I yeah. mean, we picked up food on the sidewalk, like they'd open a door, text yeah. me when you're here. I mean, I remember Lazy Dog had the big high window. Yeah. 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 <laughs> She's like, I'll run around. <laughs> But door, yeah. they were super creative, and I think the businesses in Lynn yeah. were amazing during that time, and it's awesome to see them all doing so well now yeah. that people are out. It's what, a, we, it's what we say is the chamber, is tip 20% and leave a review. Yeah, it's a funny you story. You do those two things, it's the best things you can do yeah. to help your the small businesses. Yeah. It's a funny story growing up, um, my great-grandparents owned a sub shop in Lynn, and right down the street there was another sub shop. And growing up, I always heard, oh, we love to go to your, your grandparents' place because they have the best tuna. And we love to go to this place down the street because they have the best steak bombs. You know what I mean? So back then, it was like, and this was like in GE's heyday, and mm -hmm. you know, the GE guys were coming in, and, and you know, oh, we love this from this place, and we love that. And I think I just, that's how I've always known Lynn to be. Like, yeah. you know, you go here when you want this, you go here when you want that, you go here for this. So mm -hmm. I don't know, that's just how I still. That's how I, I still am. It's the old one, I guess. Yeah. Any other questions regarding the, the food trading program at this time? This was amazing. All right. I want to thank uh, Lisa for coming. Thank in. you, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. I learned fantastic. a lot. I just want to, uh, yeah, let me turn it over to Rich real fast. Just real quick because the uh, time is running up. The Lynn Summer Youth Job Program. Um, anybody interested in hiring youth for the summer? Um, go on the community development website, the applications there. It's a great way to uh, get some help for the summer and keep kids off the streets. And next month we've got legislative up. No, uh, kind of Jim Cato. Next month is our state of the region uh, big breakfast. So get your tickets. <laughs> um, it's going to be actually at, held at the Nahat Country Club. Um, so we have, it's a full breakfast event. We have a great lineup with uh, Jim Cowdell and the mayor, as well as the town administrators for both Nahat and Swampscott coming in and talking about uh, the, um, what's happened over the last two years and or last year and what their plans are for the next three. Um, at the end of this month on the 31st, we also have Secretary Howe, who's the Secretary of Economic Development and Housing coming to Lynn. Um, she's going to be presenting on um, kind of her vision and plan for the future, um, it's, uh, specifically as it impacts the North Shore communities. Um, and that's going to be at the Democus YMCA. Uh, important note that one's, uh, this one and the state of the region both start at 8 a.m. Um, so they're slightly earlier than our traditional 8.30 meetings. Um, both are registration required, so please make sure that you're signing up. Neither is going to be Zoom, so these are in person. And All thanks right. again to Brotherhood Credit Union for uh, allowing us to use the conference room. Glad to have you. Yep. All right. Thank you so much, and have a good day. I have to ask you that, by the way. It's possible.